Is it possible to become too healthy? Hello everybody, I am Lavis and the SCP I'm going to tell you about today is SCP-407, The Song of Genesis. Let's begin. Item Number SCP-407 Object Class Neutralized Special Containment Procedures At time of acquisition, SCP-407 was recorded within a compact cassette tape. Currently, SCP-407 is backed up as a digital audio file on data expunged. SCP-407 should not be allowed to play under any circumstances outside testing conditions, and only with approval of O5. <laughs> testing of SCP-407 is to be done in completely soundproof environments. All tools and subjects must be sterilized to remove the presence of pollen, fungal spores, plant seeds, and as much bacterial life to the greatest degree possible to delay the negative effects of SCP-407. Description: SCP-407 is a song in an unidentified language, seemingly sung a cappella. The voices are thought to be human. The tape containing SCP-407 was found with one track of approximately 30 minutes duration, though the abrupt ending suggests there may be more. The song has been described by all listeners as something along the lines of soothing, glorious, and beautiful. While SCP-407 is played, rapid cell generation seems to occur within auditory radius. This effect seems to occur at the cellular level, and does not require the subject to be able to hear the music. The changes seem to only affect multicellular organisms at first, but quickly begin to affect mitosis in single-celled organisms. During the first minute of exposure, all multicellular lifeforms seem to become healthier. Subjects suffering from malnutrition, scarring, physical injury, or chronic diseases or other medical conditions seem to become healthy with only a minute of exposure to SCP-407. This has been shown to cure Alzheimer's disease, Crohn's disease, brain and spinal cord injuries, and normally fatal infections or wounds, amongst other things. Interestingly, cancer does not seem to be affected, though the subject's physical condition was still vastly improved. During the second and third minute of exposure, subjects start experiencing unnecessary, unrestrained cell growth, manifesting in quickly advancing dermal growths. These growths seem to mostly be benign tumors and calcium and fat deposits, which, though sometimes painful and disfiguring, are not life-threatening. During the fourth minute of exposure, increased bacterial and fungal growth occurs, creating conditions that grow increasingly dangerous for all exposed life, even in their new healthier states. Respiratory and digestive problems are quick to arrive in most cases, and become steadily worse as time progresses. Past five minutes, the effects of SCP-407 seem to differ each trial. In all cases, trace elements of plants or fungus as well as any animal life present begin to grow and replicate uncontrollably, at varying rates often shaping into new organisms. Full results have varied depending on the test and on the subjects present when SCP-407 is played. Addendum 407-1 SCP-407 was found in the home of Professor <coughs> of who had recently returned from research in the Amazon regions of northern Brazil. Agents were first alerted to a possible SCP when data expunged. Addendum 407-2 the mold that eventually resulted from SCP-407's second test appears to be some sort of cordyceps fungi, noted to be similar to mold encountered by SCP-507. Due to fear of fulfilling a fate similar to that observed by 507, testing using SCP-407 has been limited to using only the first 20 minutes of the recording. Addendum 407-3 Below is a sample test run of SCP-407. For full research and experimentation notes, see Experiment Log 407. Experiment Log 407 SCP-407 Test Notes Test 1 SCP-407 played for 28 minutes 32 seconds. 1 D-Class Personnel Testing Area Unsterilized 
25 seconds. Subject reports taking a great liking to music and can be observed attempting to hum along. 45 seconds. Subject reports her knee, which had been injured for years, is no longer hurting and is working well. 1 minute 25 seconds. Subject begins doing push-ups. Subject is seemingly euphoric at her physical state. Subject looks younger and shows considerable growth in musculature. 3 minutes. Subject stops exercising, reports dizziness and stomach cramps. Subject begins scratching left arm. 3 minutes 40. Subject is suffering from uncontrollable diarrhea and appears to be in great pain. Dermal clavi are seen appearing on left arm. Small weeds are seen growing in various parts of the testing chamber. 4 minutes. Corns on subject's skin are seen spreading quickly throughout body, taking a whitish hue. Subject communicates that she no longer feels pain. 4 minutes 30. Subject's skin is completely covered in thick, uneven, calloused skin. Subject no longer communicating. Chamber floor and walls seeing advanced plant growth. 5 minutes 10 seconds. Subject no longer moving and is barely recognizable as skin disfigurement continues. D-class uniform on subject disintegrating for unknown reasons. 6 minutes 45 seconds. Subject is completely unrecognizable as human, appears as a large mound of calloused flesh. The subject's new form can be seen expanding and contracting slowly. Fern-like plants are seen growing on and around the subject. 7 minutes 10 seconds. Chamber completely covered in various weeds, plants, and ferns. Majority of species are not recognizable. 7 minutes 55 seconds. Foliage in chamber is extremely thick, many of the observed plants reaching the roof. Mound originating from original subject has grown larger and seen expanding and contracting rhythmically. 8 minutes 30. Plants begin taking on a yellow tinge as if wilting. 10 minutes 30. All plant life within test chamber has died and quickly decomposed into mulch. Mound is still seen expanding and contracting, and has grown about 2 meters wide and about the same in height. 11 minutes. A variety of molds and mushrooms are seen growing throughout the chamber on the mulch of the deceased plants. Large, mouth-like openings complete with observed sets of teeth have appeared on the outside of the expanding and contracting mound in the middle of the test chamber. 13 minutes 30 seconds. Diversity of fungal life in chamber greatly increased. Fungal forms are seen growing upon one another and upon the mound originating from the primary subject, which is still seen expanding and contracting. 15 minutes. Hand-like structures seen growing in pairs on outside of mound. Fungal life in chamber still abundant. 16 minutes, 10 seconds. Hand-like structures seem to have developed eyes. Soon after eyes open, the structures detach from central mound and become mobile. Hands are seen dragging themselves towards particular fungal species, breaking off pieces, and then dragging themselves and the pieces into the mouth-like holes. 18 minutes. Majority of fungal material disappearing as more and more hands feed fungal material into the central mound. 19 minutes 30 seconds. Various plant shoots are seen growing. All species are completely unrecognizable. Only remaining fungal growths are those on the chamber ceiling. Yellowish vapors are seen coming from the central mass. 21 minutes. One of the organisms formerly identified as a plant is seen to become ambulatory. Organisms appear to grow from small, stationary, pod-like plants into adult mobile forms which use several barbed tendrils to drag themselves throughout the chamber. They are observed to scale both the walls and ceilings of the test chamber. Though about half the size of the hand-like organisms, the plant-like organisms seem to possess sharp mandibles, which they use to destroy and consume the majority of the hand-like beings. 23 minutes. Plant-like organisms begin devouring hand-like growths that continue growing from the central mound as soon as they develop a working eye. 
23 minutes 40 seconds. Plant-like organisms are seen feeding fungal material from ceiling into the mouths of the central mound. 26 minutes. Plant-like organisms seemingly breed sexually using directly delivered pollen. Life in chamber seems to be limited to three surviving species. The mobile plant-like organisms, the fungal organisms that continue to grow on the ceiling, and the central mound on the floor. 28 minutes, 32 seconds. Tape ends. Data expunged. End test 1. Notes. Data expunged. Test 2. SCP-407 played for 28 minutes, 32 seconds. Within chamber, one D-class personnel unsterilized. 25 seconds. Subject reports feeling soothed by the music and are feeling stronger and more invigorated. 45 seconds. Liver spots and scars previously seen are shown to disappear. 2 minutes 20. Subject appears to have physically grown an inch. Increase in musculature is noticeable. 3 minutes 40 seconds. Subject reports intestinal pain. 4 minutes 20 seconds. Subject begins vomiting. From vomit, plants are seen growing and slowly rooting into the tile floor. 4 minutes 50. Subject starts developing rashes and growths on skin. 5 minutes 30 seconds. Heavy dermal disfigurement. Subject panting heavily, begging for help. Great pain reported. 6 minutes 10 seconds. Subject falls to the ground and ceases to move. 6 minutes 45. Subject's body is quickly covered in what is thought to be fungal infections. Plant growth is observed growing from the subject's mouth, then eye sockets. 7 minutes 30 seconds. Subject is by this time unrecognizable, covered in molds and plant shoots. Body bursts as a banana tree emerges from the subject's intestines and proceeds to grow to maturity within seconds. 8 minutes 45 seconds. Plant and fungal growth has begun to spread throughout the testing chamber. What appears to be moss and weeds cover the floor. 9 minutes 30 seconds. Several shoots, stalks, bushes, and even small trees have appeared. Banana tree is no longer recognizable. The tree has grown thick and is covered with foliage and fungal growth. 10 minutes 30 seconds. The air is heavy with pollen and spores. Vision into testing chamber is difficult. 11 minutes 30 seconds. Movement is heard within the chamber. Several different small, insect-like creatures are observed. Creatures are seemingly made of plant matter. 17 minutes 30 seconds. For the last 6 minutes, creatures made of plant matter have been observed to rapidly generate, grow to maturity, kill and eat other creatures, and then be eaten themselves creatures increasingly progressing in size as time increases. 19 minutes. Medium-sized mammalian creatures are observed. They seem humanoid and bear a resemblance to initial subject. 21 minutes. Large fungal stalk is observed to grow from one of the mammalian creatures. Stalk end bursts dispensing white spores. 22 minutes. Plant growth is still lush, but everything begins to become coated by a layer of mold. The plant creatures seem to die slowly for an unknown reason, before being covered by the mold. 23 minutes. Mammalian creatures are the last to succumb. They heavily decay and become covered in the same mold. Bodies are shown to contract and expand as if breathing. Stalks quickly rise from the bodies, burst with spores, and then just as quickly rot. 28 minutes, 32 seconds. Tape ends. No change in chamber since the appearance of the mold. Chamber undergoes rigorous anti-biological cleansing. Samples of the mold were taken. See Addenda 407-1 and 407-2. End Test 2. Addendum 407-4. SCP-407 has been deleted from the system by what is now known to the Foundation as the interest group Serpent's Hand. All known backup copies of SCP-407 have also been deleted. 
refer to Incident Report X-23. Security Breach Incident X-23 On SCP Site-19 breached by operatives from an organization known to the Foundation only as the Serpent's Hand. Site-19 Breach The breach of Site-19 seems to have been the second of two break-ins into SCP properties by known to the Foundation as L.S. This individual was responsible for a previous security breach, having coordinated the theft of SCP-268. Though data expunged, it is evident from video surveillance that SCP-268 was involved in this infiltration. The intruder known as LS seems to have simply walked into Site-19. The intrusion seems to have been for the purpose of using SCP-914. Knowledge of the intruder's use of SCP-914 can only be assumed due to the intruder's interruption of Dr. G during routine testing. Dr. G seems to have been data expunged, resulting in the intrusion's only personnel casualty. SCP-407 seems to have been deleted from the Foundation system during this time, so it can only be assumed the individuals involved are responsible. Whether this means the file has been completely destroyed or possibly in the hands of this rogue group is unknown. A short printed note was found in SCP-914's chamber. This note is the only insight the Foundation currently has of the group responsible for this incident. See Document X-23-1. Document X-23-1 Dear Sirs of the Foundation, Behind guns and protocol you hide. Desperately chaining the ineffable, yourselves stuck within your own self-wrought pitiful cages of fear and ignorance. You think yourselves the shepherd guarding the flocks of the unwise o'er the night, but you are so shaken by doubt and fear that in your bewildered arrogance you would vainly seek to chain the sun itself unto the heavens to hold back the daily night. The delivering angels themselves you contain within three digits and four walls. Do you not see the blindness with which you walk and swing your blade? On the final day, would you have us contain Black Surtur himself with measures and science, and condemn ourselves to rotten stagnancy as you hold back his pure cleansing fires? I do not ask you not to act, but act with enlightenment and heart. Neither should one be seduced by the dark, nor blinded by the light, but walk firmly in the twilight and gaze unto all realms. Walk the world of fire with bare feet and you will find yourselves without the scars you never knew you had. Alas, in your fears you fail to see the old gods that we all are, and unable to accept this sovereignty, detain both thought and essence of those who would take man beyond the mundane. Do not be so eager to hold back the tides of unrelenting destruction, that you trample what brave weed that would dare grow in the monochrome world you wish to pave. Such blind orders stifles chaos, and what is chaos but life? I leave you with one final truth. The garden is the serpent's place. The divinities of fear and order who come to walk in the cool evening air are only visitors. Do not fail to see the evil hiding in the light, nor the aromatic beauty of the palest flower of darkness. Signed sincerely, L.S. P.S. You'll thank me for deleting what you call 407. Thank you very much for listening. If you liked what you heard and would like to hear more, please consider liking and subscribing. It would be greatly appreciated. Also, if there are any other SCPs that you would like to hear me read, please leave them in the comments below. Have a nice day.